So far in this chapter I showed you uh, an example problem where, uh, of a, a linear programming problem where we had uh, one optimal solution and the special case, first special case when we had uh, when we have multiple optimal solutions. Um, uh, there are still two more special cases to talk about and in both of them we will have zero optimal solutions or in other words there will not be an optimal solution. The first of those two special cases is the case of infeasible problem. So consider the following problem. Matt uh, wants to decide how many small and large desks to make in order to maximize the total profit. He has some limited uh, material. The material is wooden board and uh, he has only 12 square meters of it and he, he, he needs uh, 1.5 square meters for each small desk and three square meters for each large desk, right? And, uh, so this is a, a limitation. He knows the profits for small and large desks and he also promised some customers to make desks. So he already knows he needs to make at least five small desks and at least three, at least three large desks. Um, he might make more to, make, to sell, right? And uh, make more profits, but he needs at least this. So what would be the model here now? Matt needs to decide, first of all, the number of desks of each type to produce. So he needs to say x1 right, will be number of small desks to make. Right? That's x1, number of small desks to make, and then you will have x2, second decision variable, number of large desks to make. He wants to maximize profit, so his objective will be max, and the profit can be calculated as 50 dollars for each small desk, so times x1, plus 90 dollars for each large desk, that's x2, and we can say profit in dollars as a comment. Uh, now, what are the constraints? We'll say subject to. Well, he has limited wooden boards, a wooden board, um, so he needs to say he uses 1.5 square meters, 1.5 square meters of wooden board uh, for each small desk, so that's times x1, and he uses 3 square meters for each large times x2. That has to be less than or equal 12, that's the number of square meters of wooden boards available, right? Now I could write uh, a, a long description here, but because I don't have space, I will just put square meters, we will know this is wooden boards. Um, what other constraints do I need to write? Well, I need to say he needs minimum um, five small desks, oops, five, and he needs minimum three large desks, right? And actually this is this this is the complete model. I don't need for example to add uh, the bounds of the form x1 greater than or equal to zero. Uh, x1 greater than or equal to zero which would say you know don't make negative number of uh, desks it doesn't make sense. Well in this case this is already satisfied when x1 is greater than or equal to 5. So we could say this constraint is actually redundant. A constraint is redundant if it is satisfied if we, even if we don't put it, right? Because of other constraints. Uh, so this is the complete model. Now how do we solve this? So we need to um, draw the the, the, the feasible region on a two-dimensional chart and so this axis x1 and x2 and we have to start uh, drawing the constraints so uh, so let's uh, let's start by by the, the first constraint x1 uh, 1.5 x1 plus 3 x2. Now to draw it right we have to say equals 12 and we have to see which point satisfy this constraint. So we need two points and we need to draw a line through them. The easy points will be if x1 is 0 then I can say 3x2 is equal 12. That means x2 is 12 over 3 which is 4. So I have one point which is 0 and 4. x1 0, x2 4. This is the point. And then I need 
Um, and another easy point would be x2 equals 0, then I have 1.5 x1 equals 12. That means x1 is 12 over 1.5, which is 8. So I have a point 0.8, 0, right? Don't confuse the order. x1 is 8 and x2 is 0. So I have 8, 0. So now I need a line that goes through those two points which looks like this. And now I have to ask myself, okay, this was equal 12. Where is it less than or equal 12? Well, some of you may be guessing this is below the line, right? Uh, now, uh, I, we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't just take it for granted. We shouldn't guess. Uh, we, sh we have to prove that it is below the line. So to prove it, we just need to choose a point on one side of the line and, and check if it is feasible or not, right? Um, it's a good idea to take easy points. Like in this example, a point zero, 0, would be the easiest point to, to do the calculations because if I try point zero, 0, I will see that if I plug it into the constraint, if I say 1.5 times 0 plus 3 times 0, right, plugging into this constraint, I will get equal 0, and that is definitely less than or equal 12, right? If Matt is producing no desks, he's using at most 12 square meters of wooden board. So this point is feasible. That means all points below the line must be feasible, right? Because whatever line we have, if we have a line like this, it can be either points that are below that are feasible or in another case it can be points that are above that are feasible okay so let's indicate this on the on the graph and let's do some cleanup so we have our first constraint now we need uh, the, the remaining two constraints well these are actually lower bounds on variables the first of them says x1 greater than or equal to 5 so i can say what is x1 equal to 5 well x1 equal 5 is here and all points that are above or below this point will have x1 equal 5. So here they are marked now. And where will be points that are have values greater than 5? Well, in this case, to the right, right, it is... So let's mark it. All points to the right of this line have uh, values greater than or equal to 5. Now we need a third constraint. So the third constraint will be x x2 greater than or equal Three, so we will say what is x2 equal to 3 well x2 axis here is equal to 3 in this point so all points to the right all points to the right here will have values equal 3 or to the left but we are not interested in the negative side of the chart all right all points on this line uh, are equal to 3 all points above this line will be greater than or equal to 3 or actually there they are. So now we have now that we have all three constraints indicated on this chart, the question is where is the uh, feasible region? What points are feasible for this model? Well, if you notice, if I take for example those two constraints x1 at least 5, x2 at least 3, right? I get a feasible region that is the the, the area above this line uh, sorry to the right of this line and above this, right? All these points here, oops, sorry. Um, all these points here will be feasible for those two constraints. Now I have to also consider the third constraint, right? This, this one, the number of square meters of wooden board it says you have to be below this line or on this line to, to be feasible, right? So what is the common set? There is no common set here between those two, this region and the region below the line, right? There is no common set of points. So in other words, we can say in this example the feasible region is empty. Feasible region is empty. Right? Or there are no feasible solutions. Okay, what does this mean? This means that there are no values of x1, x2 that we could plug into these three constraints that would satisfy all three of them. Okay, we might find points that satisfy the last two constraints, but they will not satisfy 
the, 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 the first constraint. And we might find you know, other points that satisfy a subset of constraints, but never all of them. And feasible points have to satisfy all of them. So if the feasible region is empty, if there are no feasible solutions, what is the optimal solution then? Right? The optimal solution is the best of feasible points. But if we have no feasible points, we have nothing to choose from. So in this case, because the feasible region is empty, optimal solution does not exist. Right? So the solution is, there is no solution. Um, and this is, so as, as I said, in this special case, when the problem is infeasible, when there are no feasible solutions, we can't show an optimal solution. It doesn't exist. Um, what does it mean in practice, right? So what is Matt doing wrong? What did he do wrong? Well, um, uh, if the constraints uh, cannot be satisfied, that means they are uh, the problem is over-constrained. There are two strong restrictions, and in this case those restrictions, one of them, the first of them is about material, the, the, the second and third are about what he promised, right? So he either has to say, well, I promised too much, uh, or, I, uh, or I maybe I didn't promise too much, but uh, I need more material, right? One of those he has to sort out. He either has to reduce the number of desks he promised, or he has to get more material. And for example, in this case, he could say, how much material do I need in order to make minimum number of desks five and three small desks, uh, five small desks and three large desks. So if he said, for example, x1 is equal five, well, let's just stick to the smallest number of desks, and x2 is equal to three, then he could say, how much material do I need? Uh, well, I need 1.5 square meters for each of the small desks times five, and I need three square meters for each large desk. There is three of them that I want to make. So that gives me five times one and a half, that's seven point five, and plus nine, three times three is nine, that gives me 16.5. And you see now why this problem is infeasible. Because to just make five and three, five small desks, three large desks, he needs 16.5 square meters uh, of wooden board when he only has 12 at most that he can use, right? So that, that explains. So this is a, an example case where uh, the infeasibility is not obvious, right? It is obvious if, if you had a problem when you have, for example, x1 must be at least 10, and you have another constraint where it says x1 is at most 5, this one is obvious, right? Uh, it's easy to see these two constraints contradict each other. But there is actually a contradiction here in among those three constraints, right? Together they cannot be satisfied, so there is a contradiction in this set, right? And it is not easy to see that, that there is a contradiction unless we show something like this, right? Um, like like this, this, this um, calculation. So in, in, in general when you when you solve larger problems with many variables, many constraints, and you get um, you, when you solve them using computers as we will do later, and you get a, an infeasible problem. Uh, um, and so no solution exists because the problem is infeasible. In general, it is not easy to uh, identify exactly which constraints uh, are causing the infeasibility, right? When I have 20 constraints, there might be three or four or five of them that together uh, cause uh, infeasibility and the problem might be difficult to, to detect. So you have to try and relax or, uh, uh, some of the constraints, remove some constraints or uh, change their values like this 12, increase it to something higher in order to see when the problem becomes feasible and then you, you learn something about why it is infeasible, right? So this was one of the special cases, uh, or second special case, infeasible problem, uh, where we have no uh, optimal solution because the solutions, if there is no feasible solutions, the solution doesn't exist. And then I will show you another case where we have uh, uh, also zero optimal solutions, no optimal solution, but for a different reason.